Hi, so my name's Angela. I'm a registered nurse licensed in New York State. I work bedside um, in a cardiothoracic ICU, and I also do, I'm a certified injector, so I do Botox, fillers, and all that. And I kind of wanted to just touch upon like the life of a nurse, what we do in the hospital, um, how it affects our life outside of it as well. I guess I'll just begin with how I came to be a nurse. So I first was in college and I was majoring, my major was exercise science. I was um, following a PT track. I wanted to be a physical therapist. And um, I started working for a physical therapist to kind of just see if I really liked it because everything's like different on paper than, you know, when you actually work in the field. Um, and he was he was really smart. He taught me a lot. You could tell he was really passionate about what he did. He worked with honestly all age groups, but specifically like a lot of um, young athletes. And at the time, like I was just super into like ergonomics and like the way you move your body and um, like health and fitness and all that. So I was like, oh, this is like the perfect job for me. And then honestly, just working, it wasn't like the place. It wasn't anything like that. It just wasn't for me. Yeah. Um, I felt like I wasn't, it wasn't like feeding my soul. Like I, it wasn't rewarding for me. And so at the time, I don't remember why I was like taking classes in the summer, but, um, I was in college and I was in a summer class and I was like, all right, well, I was in chemistry one and chem two was about to begin. And I knew I didn't want to do this anymore. So I was like, why am I going to put myself through the second class if I don't, want to do this like career anymore i knew i wasn't gonna keep this major if i wasn't going to continue with that career and um but i was like what do i do drop out of this class and then or don't take the second class and then do what like the next semester was going to begin so i was like i kind of needed to know what i was going to do and i spoke to my sister who is a year older than me and she was majoring in nursing at the time and she was like you know why don't you major in nursing And I'm like, oh, no, like, I don't want to do that. I feel like I was very um, just uneducated and naive. Like, I had no clue what nursing entailed. But in my head, I was like, I don't want to be someone's servant. Like, I was like, I don't want to be someone's bitch. Like, honestly, I feel like a lot of people who have no clue really what nursing is, which if you don't work in a hospital, like, no one knows this way. Like, no, I wouldn't know what someone else does in their job. Like, you know what it sounds like on paper, but... I feel like there's also a lot of stereotypes about nurses or like misconceptions. So, well, I think it also takes a really certain kind of person, like to be able to do everything that nurses do. Like, even just hearing from Claudia, like what she had to go through in clinicals. Yeah. I was like, I could never, you know what I mean? Like, wiping people's ass. And like, you can't really choose during clinicals, right? Like, or anything like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have to go through, um, different like specialties yeah and so you you can't pick you have to go through all of them regardless Mm -hmm. um because with each type of clinical so like a labor and delivery there was a class for that in school that you had to pass so you had to do both like simultaneously which is kind of good i feel like because then you kind of get a feel of like okay i like this yeah exactly exactly so um yeah, so that was good. So I was like, all right, like, you know, I, well, at first I was like, I don't want to do this. This is not really like, it doesn't interest me. And she was like, well, the good thing about this career is that if you don't like one thing, you can do something else without having to go back to school, right? So like, let's say you're working inpatient bedside, like in a, so in a hospital with um, a geriatric population and they're all like CHFers, they have congestive heart failure. You're working in a hospital, three twelves, so three shifts a week, 12 hours, and nights, holidays, weekends, that all comes with, with the territory, and you're miserable. You can, let's say, switch to the complete opposite and do outpatient work in a pediatrics office, Monday through Friday with mm-hmm. kids and, like, completely different lifestyle. Um, you can work in a school, be a school nurse, and have your summers right. off. Like, there's so many different things you could do. And I was like, all right, like, that's a good point. And I had no clue what I wanted to do. And I knew I still wanted to work. Like, I like science. I kind of wanted to stay in the realm of like health and science and all that. So I was like, all right, like, I I like working with people and I'll try it. I was like, whatever. Like, I didn't know what I was going to do anyway. So I switched my major. And then um, after my first semester of clinical of um, class, I didn't do clinical yet. Um, The second semester doing my nursing, actually, I think I the second semester that I was in this major, 
I started clinical. I honestly can't even remember. And it was after I started clinicals that I applied for a position at the hospital that I was doing my rotations at. And it was, it's called a nurse externship. I really don't know the difference. Everyone's like, what's the difference between an externship and an internship? Yeah. I don't know if it's just what they call it, but it's just like available to nursing students. And um, it's a way, I guess, for them to become acclimated to like so life you, as a nurse. Like, can you work while you're still doing like in school and doing the clinicals? Yeah. I, I know um, some hospitals Like, I'm wondering do... if that's the difference of it. Because, like, maybe. I don't know. Well, no, because oh, an internship, you still can... Okay, I don't know either. I don't know. I'm not going to try. You know the difference? No. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, I have no clue. But some externships work differently. I think maybe it was called, I don't know, an externship because most of them um, were just in the summers. Okay. Um, mine was different. Mine was just until like up until I graduated. So I could do it during the school year as well. And I was going in like once or twice a week, depending on like my school and clinical schedule. And I I felt like this job, I say it now, even though I'm like, you know, I've worked my way up. I still say like this job was the best job I ever had. I was working close to the nurses so I can see what it was like to be a nurse. Mm -hmm. But I also was working with the nursing assistants and the aides and I was able to and just working with both, I feel like, all right, I was going to see what my future would look like. But then with the AIDS, I was like building a good foundation for myself and honestly learning just how to like interact with patients. Like yeah. I never had experience like that before. Um, I mean, in the physical therapy office, it was different because it was like, you know, it's more like it's an outpatient type thing. You come in, you get treated for an hour, you leave, whatever. This is like you're taking care of them all day. Did you – so did you – work an actual job with the physical therapy as well yeah okay so okay. yeah so you knew yeah um and so yeah so I loved this job I felt like this was I think when I started this job was when I was like okay this like is the career for me mm-hmm. um I, I this I, I don't want it's, this to sound like I'm like oh I'm such a good person but like I really felt like I just like cared so much about these people and like I was building such good like connections like I would come in and genuinely be like so happy and I really like old people like Mm -hmm. I never wanted to work with kids or babies I just I always like the geriatrics I think they're like the cutest things and like (laughs) like if I could adopt every old man as my grandpa I would oh my god that's and um you know what I I look at them and I'm like I just think about I don't even know how to put this into words. I feel like it so, sounds so weird for other people to hear. But I would just like look at these old people and I would feel so bad. And I would think like everyone gets so excited about like, you know, babies and like yeah. beginning of life. And then towards the end of life, everyone's like, they're gross. They smell bad. Like, you know, all these yeah. about, But they've like put so much of their life and like love and energy into this world. And they raised families and they had kids and they were babies once too. And then like now they're suffering and they're sitting there like, depressed and I just like always felt so bad like I don't know why like my heart I literally would just look at someone and like sometimes sitting in a hospital bed like just look at them like before I go in the room whatever and I would like want to cry just like seeing kind of their face and emotions and like they just looked sad but I think like you said that's that's good because that shows that you actually were so passionate about it and that it was really like I feel like that was your confirmation of like okay this would fulfill me this is what I'd want to do yeah you it know? was yeah, yeah. I don't because I didn't know if I I didn't know if I would like what I was like, right the nurse I didn't know if I would like nursing and then when I started that job I was like okay this is mm-hmm. it and it was funny because my sister is a nurse but she was just like yeah like I don't really feel that way and she's like this is definitely for you like she's what like I'm she still feeling it out but um she works in a hospital she actually just switched her she got a new job so now she's going to be working in um an ivf clinic like outpatient okay. um she just i guess that kind of goes into what we're talking about like she didn't like bedside yeah anymore so she um was like all right like i think i need a different lifestyle and a different right. like change of pace kind of like get the patients in and out and kind of see um something different yeah um and i don't think she'll work like holidays or weekends and stuff right. so it's a little like yeah better of a lifestyle yeah, yeah. um but yeah, and I remember one t- like I would come home. So I worked through to 11 and I would get home at like 1145 around. It was a little far from my house. And my mom would like always stay awake. Just, she was just like, I just need to make sure you're home safe. Like, mm-hmm. And I would always like I would come home and my eyes were like bloodshot because I was seriously like crying. Just like 
I felt bad for these people. Mm -hmm. And she was like, oh my God, like, did a patient die? And I was like, no, I it just feel bad for them. And yeah. she was like, okay, well, like, in, she was like, this is, this is how you know this is for you. Like, right. she's like, this is the career for you. And she's like, and it makes me so happy because there's so many people who – like don't care about these people and there's so many yeah. and these people need someone like you know you see videos of like caretakers um like people have those like cameras in their house mm -hmm. and they like hire people to take care of their parents and they're older and even and in hospitals yeah i mean people yeah. are just people can be evil and it, it makes me wonder like why do they even apply for those jobs I know. because if you're not gonna i mean that's with anything even like you know people that would you know watch animals or something it's like i don't yeah. understand if you don't like it and you can't do it why do it right you know so it's i know like, it's I, so I do sad. agree because i think and that's with anything even cops like there's good cops there's bad cops like i feel like yeah. with anything you do there's always going to be good and bad so of course you know when somebody's really passionate about it it's like it's a reminder and a breath of fresh air that there are like good people that can take it seriously and do it right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's kind of um, like how my mom felt. She was like this, they need people like this. And I was just like, I was so happy. Cause I was like, all right, like this is, this is for me. Like so happy. I remember one time we were doing, uh, I was in clinical and we were doing um, post-mortem care on a patient who had just died. And he was an older man. Um, honestly probably like in his 80s and they had didn't they did chest compression so he, he was like completely bruised and on his chest his ribs were broken and um I like walked in with some of the other like students and like that's it I was just bawling like yeah. I couldn't even breathe like snots coming out of my nose like and some of the other girls were crying too and um I like came back to work the next day and because I worked there at the same hospital and one of the nurses was like you know I saw you crying yesterday. She's like, you know, you need to get like thicker skin or else like, you know, you can't do this job because you're going to see death every day. Like you need thicker skin. You can't just cry like that. And I was like, I didn't even normally I'm like, oh, my God, like that's so embarrassing. Like, mm -hmm. but I was like, honestly, the day that I don't have any emotion towards a patient or a human being dying in front of my face, that's the day like this is this career is no longer for me. Right. I and agree. I'm not meant to do this. Yeah. Um, so I was like, that was the first time I was like, you know what? No. Like I yeah, you should be like, why don't like, you cry a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> why don't you have some emotion? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, you know what? Like I actually was confident in myself and I was like, no, like I I'm proud of myself for mm -hmm. like crying. I'm like, you know, I'm not ashamed. And um, so I'm all happy, like, you know, think this is the best thing ever. And then I graduate and I was like so ready to work. And originally, so my dream from when I graduated was to work in a cardiothoracic ICU where um, we recover and manage patients right after open heart surgery. Okay. And usually to get into like a specialty like that, you have to have some experience first, but there's a hospital that they take you on and they, it's called, you have to get into their fellowship and they'll hire you as a new grad um, for this specialty. So I applied and I was like, this was like, I put all my eggs in this basket. Like I was like, I don't even want to apply anywhere else. I just want to try to get this. And um, the interview was just horrible. Like ask me really? questions that like, I feel like any new grad, like no one would know. Right. And I like leave the interview. Like they I, were like quizzing you in a way or? Yeah. Okay. They were asking me like um, about specific heart rhythms and like treatments for it. And I'm sitting there like. I spent one day in school going over like EKGs. Like right. I, I don't know the answers to this. And like maybe if like they showed me a strip, I'd be able to see what the rhythm is. But like I didn't know certain treatments for like a bunch of different like rhythms at the time. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know what this is. Right. You were fresh out. So it's like Yeah. And you know how they say like you don't really learn in right. school. Like you learn on the job. I feel like yes. Like obviously we studied like crazy and learned a bunch of stuff, but it was like not really applicable until like you're on the job right and you, you know? get the like, actual and, experience yeah. in the field yeah like me learning mitosis and biology does nothing for a human mm -hmm. being so right um so I had like no clue and I honestly said to them in the interview I was like I don't know and they were like no you do like you know just think a little and I'm like no I don't know and I walked out and I knew I didn't get the job I'm like all right so I was like crushed completely defeated and I was like all right so you know I have to start on um I don't want to make it sound like it's like a bad, like a shit unit that no one wants to be on, but um, it's called a med surge unit. So it's essentially like critical care ICU, you know, like 
they're the most intense. They need like, usually it's like two to one, two, you know, two patients to a nurse. Like they need to be more closely monitored. And then you have like a step down unit and then you have med surge. So like step down is they still need to be watched a little more closely, but not intensive care. Mm -hmm. Um, And then you have med surge telemetry, which is they don't need, they're not as sick. They don't need you to be watching them as vigilantly. Like it's, um, more like freeing. They get a little more freedom, the patients, um, they're stable. And so that was the unit that I started on. I got my job. I think I took my NCLEX in February. I graduated in like December, in January, December, January. I took my NCLEX like a month later. And then, um, I was working like two months later. And, I feel like in this job, it was like everything I ever thought I knew about nursing, like my walls just came like crashing down. Like I was like, what? Like I was like, what did I do? Like it was, I was, I don't know. It was just like I was in for a shock. I was like, this is not what like I thought it was. Um, And it was more like, so I was hard on myself. So I started the job and um, on this unit at the hospital I was working at, you get six patients to one nurse um my sister also worked on a unit like this same unit med surge telemetry which telemetry just means um they're hooked up to cardiac monitors so you can and then we have monitors outside the room so we can see their rhythms like Mm -hmm. at all times and their heart rate and all that and so at some hospitals have it where it's just a med surge and then just the telemetry so there's like different levels with this is this was one and my sister worked on um, a similar unit and her ratio was one nurse to four patients and she would say like if it was a bad day and they were really short they would get six patients but for the most part it was like four maybe five so I was already like kind of going in a little overwhelmed like I have six patients like and they were pretty sick um the hospital I work at it's an older it's more of an older um patient population it's um a lot of people who go there have heart problems more like congestive heart failure so it's really later in life and they're pretty sick so um a lot of their they a lot of people go there because their cardiologists work there um and they're older so I didn't really get like I I wasn't used to um I didn't really get adults I didn't get like younger people I wasn't getting 20 year old patients 30 year olds um you know any type of traumas weren't coming to us so um I felt like it was a pretty heavy workload and I remember my um when I started I was like I wasn't miserable first when I started I was just like honestly trying to get used to it and learn the rhythm and I first started training on day shift and I was I didn't like it I mean it was just like chaos and it was busy like the whole 12 hours and I was like I was just over it. Like it was like hour eight and I'm like, how is this nurse still going? Like I was yeah. training with her and I was like, I can't, like, I just can't do this. So at this point, were you doing the three 12 hours? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So I was following my preceptor schedule and it's just three, three days a week, 12 hours. Okay. And then when I was on my own, cause I was hired for nights, I started on nights, which I like nights. I still do nights and I like it a lot better. Um, but when I was an extern, let's say a patient, you know, they ring their call bell, I go in the room and they're like, I'm short of breath or I'm in pain or whatever it may be. I'll take their vital signs. So I'll check their blood pressure, you know, their heart rate, O2 set, all that. And I hand it to the nurse and it becomes her problem, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, I did my job. Goodbye. Like he, she has to deal with it. She or he like, And if let's say something happens and they have to RT the patient, like a rapid response, an emergency, code the patient, you know, if she needs an EKG or like a blood sugar, I can do that for them. But it's not my responsibility to keep this patient alive. Mm -hmm. And being a nurse, uh, like I'm responsible for everything. So like that is my responsibility. And obviously there's it's teamwork. There's other, you know, roles that come into play. But it's like, I can't just say, oh, okay, I'll get your nurse now. It's like, that's me. Right. And I just felt like it was a lot of responsibility all at once. And and that was with every single patient you were having. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, now it was like, oh, this patient wants, this patient wants to talk to you. This one wants this or this one wants that. And honestly, it's not that, it wasn't like, oh, I don't want to deal with them. It was just, 
I felt like at first, okay, maybe I just need to manage my time better, you know? So I get on and sometimes you'd get on and there's like four call bells going off and right. it's all my patients. And there's once like um, the three to 11 shift leaves, which is the, um, the aides do a different shift. So they're like seven to three, three to 11, 11 to seven. So like once three to 11 left, we had like no staff at night. Mm-hmm. So which usually nights is staffed more poorly than days. And there's uh, there would be like two aides and one aide would have like 18 patients so i'm not getting any help right and it's not their fault they also need help themselves Mm -hmm. and so i was the one who for the most part it's you know you have to work with the aide and like if a call ball goes off and you don't see them it's probably because they're in a room with their 18 other patients and like you have to get it and so you go in the room but then um you know let's say the patient was like hey i just i'm i need to go for i want to go for a walk or i want to whatever that's or that could be like just getting them out of bed with the monitor and the iv pumps and you know maybe they need a walk or whatever it is that may be already like a 45 minute ordeal and then there's someone else who's been calling for 30 minutes yeah. and then you finally get this patient back to bed oh, okay you know after that walk it really tired me like i need pain meds so now you're even prolonging this even longer where someone's mm-hmm. been ringing for you. Yeah. And it's th- over. It sounds overwhelming. It's it's so overwhelming. Yeah. And so then I'm like, OK, so then I run to the med room. Someone's in the med room. So then I wait because I'm like, let me just finish with this patient, because if I go to the next patient while someone's in the med room, then this patient may need something that will take me a half hour. And then I never got their pain meds. So then it's right. like you wait, you go, you get their pain meds, you give it to them and you have to take their blood pressure before you give them pain meds. Cause if their blood pressure is really low, you don't want to give them a narcotic that's just going to tank it. So, you know, then finally get out of the room and you go to your other patient's room and they're like, I've been waiting an hour. And it's like, they're mad at you. Sometimes they're cursing at you, just degrading you. And I get it. I mean, honestly, like I don't really blame them. Like right. unless they're like calling for water, which can wait yeah like i understand why they're frustrated because they're calling for help and they've been waiting for 45 minutes and there's like no one really to help Mm -hmm. and you know there's maybe there's there's other nurses but then they're in their rooms and there's an aide that's on the other side that could come over but and help on this side but she's on in a patient room as well um and so it's like i I went from feeling like I was making such a difference in people's lives and I was connecting so well to them and that like, you know, just feeling so rewarded to feeling like I was failing them and I was failing myself. Like I was I was like, I'm failing these patients because no one's happy. Like I'm not making anyone happy. And then I felt like I was failing myself because I was like, you you were just so happy that you were made for this. Like you wanted to work so bad. You were so excited to graduate and now you're miserable and you can't make yourself happy and you can't make your patients happy. So like, you know, I was just like so down on myself and I feel like I being that, and I know there's nurses who work on similar units um, in different States that have like eight patients, 10 patients. So I I don't even know how they do that. I'm not even saying that I have it like, horrible but i couldn't i felt overwhelmed with six and um the unit i worked on we did a lot of um well it was the orthopedic unit in the hospital so we did joint replacements um and spinal surgeries and those patients are on fluids for a certain amount of time after surgery and um let's say they got their knee done sometimes they're in like an immobilizer like it looks like a big black leg brace Um, even their hips, backs, like it's going to take them a good half hour to get out of bed because they're in pain. They just got their joints done, like swinging off the bed. You use your legs, your hips, or even your back. So, um, usually, and they're usually in, you know, they want their pain meds around the clock because just to manage it better so that they can move without pain. And so when physical therapy comes in the morning, they can get up and walk and some patients were in so much pain, let's say then they can't do physical therapy and then they're delaying their progress. So um, there's usually, there was more of a routine with these patients. You knew, okay, they needed to get up the same day of surgery. Let's kind of go on a schedule with your pain meds. Let's get you walking at this time because they were on fluids. They had to go to the bathroom a lot. Um, And so it was, it was a lot to manage like um, ortho patients. And I just never liked ortho. It wasn't, it wasn't them. It just was never something I was interested in. Like I always wanted to be in, and I see you that, you know, focus on like 
the heart. And then here I am on like focusing on like bones and joints. So it just wasn't anything that I really liked. But um, I just felt like I was so task oriented that it was like, okay, you know, assess the patient, you know, go in the room, assess the patient, take their blood pressure, give them their meds, go to the next one. And it was like, there was no talking to these people. There was no way to like form any type of bond or connection with them, in my opinion. Um, maybe some nurses felt like it wasn't as hard for them, but I personally just felt like I was struggling. Um, and I think that's why I wasn't happy because I did like talking right. to these people and I did like, um, you know, asking them questions and sitting with them and learning about, you know, where they came from or where they live, just like small talk, honestly. And I was just like, Ronnie was like, okay, medicated this one, go to the next one. Okay, go to this one, the call bells. And it was just like, what could I, how, how efficiently could I get in and out of the room so that I could get my stuff done? And really like, you don't have to talk to these patients, right? Like you don't have to have a conversation with them if you don't want to, but you have to get your charting done and you have to give your meds. And if you discharge a patient, you have to do your discharge paperwork and you get an admission from the ER, uh, from the ER or someone comes from um, surgery. There's orders that you have to follow or it's your job on the line, your license, yeah. God forbid something happens. So that's what you're focused on doing. Right. And you like lose sight of the fact that these are people and the whole point of really being bedside and being a nurse is also to interact and form like connections with these people. And I think when I lost that aspect of it all, I was just miserable. And I was like, this isn't it. I was, I felt so burnt out. I was working overtime because it was like my first big girl job. So I was like, I love the money I was making. And then the overtime pay was like double time. Um, it wasn't even time and a half. So I was like, right. oh, this is double time. Like, yeah, no problem. So then I was picking up like extra shifts all the time. And um, working nights could be hard as well because I love nights. I wouldn't switch it. But I know at first, I even though I liked it, I was like, oh, like this is hard because now I've kind of got a routine with it. And I kind of know, you know, when I need to be up and how long I need to sleep in order to, you know. But in the beginning you're literally asleep when the sun's out and then when you wake up the sun's down so you never right. see the, the light like yeah and that's depressing especially for people who have like seasonal depression mm -hmm. it's like you feel like that all year round because you never see the daylight and when you get out of work and you do see the sun you're going right to bed yeah and um so let's say i worked last night i would have been up this morning i would have been out of work at like 8 a.m this morning and if I am back tonight, if I was back tonight, I would just sleep because, you know, I had to sleep before I was back that same day. But if I'm now that I'm if I'm off from work, I worked last night and I'm off today, I usually would like get home at eight o'clock, shower, um, eat something and then I'll sleep from like nine to twelve. So I'll just get like three hours of sleep, which really is nothing. But then I would get up and at least I was up and I saw the daylight yeah, and I would make use of my day. Right. Yeah, because it's like if that's your one day off and you slept that whole day, then you are waking up at like five o'clock at night. Who is hanging out with you on a Monday at five o'clock? Yeah. Like everyone had work. Everyone's going to sleep and there's nothing open. Like what are you going to do? So you just sit in your house and literally like maybe you'll have dinner with your family or like, but that's it. And then everyone wants to go to sleep because everyone has work the next day and you're up all night because you just woke up at five o'clock so now it's like 2 a.m and you're sitting there watching tv and it's like what kind of yeah. life is that so i feel like that also at first when i first started nights i feel like i really relied on my sleep to kind of get me through my shift so i was sleeping a lot and i felt like i had no life was and that say, was it's hard. like sacrificing like your social life in a way or like yeah. any type of like normalcy outside of work yeah and then i wasn't used to um working I knew I would have to work weekends but I didn't and honestly it didn't really bother me it's still I really don't care but um I never really worked holidays so that was kind of rough because I was like I had FOMO and I was like well I, it's like Christmas like mm -hmm. I don't want to be like I want to be opening gifts with my family yeah. like um and whereas when I was an extern I did work not it, I didn't have to work that many holidays because it really was kind of just like an internship but I worked um, 
some holidays and I never minded it because I was like, well, you know, here's people who are missing out with their family as well. Like, so we're in it together type of thing. Right. And I think this like, you know, um, when I became a nurse and all this stuff kind of piled up on it on itself, it was like, all right, just add another thing to the list. Like, yeah. you know, and um, so then I hit my year mark and I usually it's like a year until you can go to a different specialty like labor and delivery or um, critical care. Um, even I think emergency rooms, sometimes they require some experience. It really depends on the hospital. Um, but, and I guess, I don't know if it varies between states, but so I hit my year and my hospital, not all, all hospitals have a CTICU and mine does. So, um, I applied to transfer to the CTICU and I got the job and I was like, oh, thank God. Like, this is what I wanted all along. Like I was, I just couldn't do it anymore. And I was really sad to leave my coworkers because that really they like were the best, Mm -hmm. but I knew like I could, I was so depressed. My fiance was like, you're miserable like all the time like what could we do like like I wasn't even like angry I was just like miserable and he's Mm -hmm. like like whatever it is that you need to do wherever you need to move in whatever specialty like what can we do to like start get the ball rolling because like this is not like okay like you're not happy and at first I'm like okay maybe it's just me but you know like you know when you like talk to your friend you're like oh I hate my life and they're like oh my god me too like Mm -hmm we would talk amongst ourselves and we'd be like, oh my God, I'm miserable. And it seemed to be like what everyone felt. So I'm like, all right, this profession just sucks. Like it is what it is. That's why there's like memes about it and videos and like TikToks yeah. about it. Like, and people make fun of it because like it sucks. And I felt like I was just like throwing pills at people and running out of the room. And like, I'm just like, this is not what I like thought at all. And then I went to this new unit which I like would I walked on my first day to train and I was already just like fascinated like there's all these like life-saving devices that I never heard of and ever like you know I've never saw a patient like intubated and sedated and it was just I was like I was afraid to touch them I was afraid to touch the wrong wire like or line or anything and I felt like okay like this was the challenge I needed I, I wanted to learn more I wanted to do more I wanted I wanted more responsibility I wanted someone to be like wow like you know how to do that you know like I felt more important and useful I was gonna say too it sounds more like thrilling and exciting yeah it's like I feel like if you lose that thrill in anything you do it's like what's the point of doing it it becomes like this pattern and it sounds like that's what the other job you know or the other unit you were on it was like it became this pattern of like go 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 yeah and I feel like even from when you first started sharing your story like when you were I mean you said how important it was to form the connection with people, which I just feel like if you're a people person and that matters to you, that's always going to matter no matter what you do. Right. You know? So it's like if you get into this routine of not even being able to talk to someone for more than just like, here's this, you know what I mean? You're going right. to, there's no way to be happy because then it's like at the end of the day, you're not even being social. Like there's no human interaction. Yeah. It's literally just like, there's a word I'm trying to think of, but it's, I can't think of it, but it's just like, yeah, you're just going in this pattern of like, you know, go, go, go. And you're just, you you don't even have a second to just stop and like say hello and even take a second for yourself. It sounds like so. Yeah. Like I'm like, these are people that are relying on me Mm -hmm. for 12 hours. And I think they forgot my name already. And I don't even know their name. Like someone would be like, do you have room, whatever? And I would look at my paper and be like, who's that again? Because it really was just, it was just so chaotic. And I mean, everywhere is short staffed. It's not just my hospital. Mm -hmm. It's like, Every hospital is short-staffed. Um, so it wasn't like I was like, oh, I'll go somewhere else. It'll be better. You know, the grass isn't always greener. And I knew that this it's just the way it was. Like, um, Do you think it's the short-staffing? Do you think that's a problem because there's just not enough people that want to be nurses? Or Honestly, I think it's because no one really wants to work bedside anymore. Yeah. And because that honestly... I feel like a lot of times I see that on TikTok too. People will make uh, videos and they'll say that like leaving bedside was the best thing they ever did. And now they work outpatient and they love their job. Like, you know, just at like a doctor's office or something. Um, And I think a lot of times people will like, let's say I got into this job and I didn't have any aspiration to 
do critical care or do something else. And I kind of just was like, all right, I'm a nurse. I'll do whatever comes. And I got that job and I never left. Like I never wanted to move somewhere else. I probably would have just been like, would have quit too and been like, without having something else signed up, I yeah. probably would have quit and then just said, all right, let me like look for some outpatient like office to work at because this sucks. Like, yeah. Um, and I think a lot of people, you have to give up your weekends. You have to give up your holidays. You have to give up. You have to be willing to work nights. And I mean, look, it's not like, you know, I'd like to think, I mean, at 22 years old, I got out of school. I'd like to think I was making good money for a 22 year old. So it's not like, I was getting abused. Like I signed up for a job that I knew I was going to work, you know, these hours yeah. and these days, but not everyone wants to do it. And why do it if you're miserable? Like mm -hmm. why have a worse schedule if you're miserable? So I think it's the bedside aspect. You're, people are relying on you for 12 hours. And if something doesn't get done, it falls on you. Mm -hmm. um, if honestly on anything, no matter, I feel like I've noticed most things even if I don't want to like throw other people under the bus, but like if another, um, someone else in a different role, let's say, doesn't do their part, it kind of still falls on the nurse. So like, let's say the doctor orders a medication uh, or a PA or NP, whoever it is, orders um, a medication and you give it because that's what was in the order. Um, maybe it seems reasonable to you. All right, like they just wanted them on this medication. Doesn't seem crazy. It's not like it's a, you know, and you give it and that medication, they let's say they meant to order something else. It's your fault because you were the last line and yeah. you gave it to the patient. So it's your fault for not questioning the order. Right. Um, if a patient is going for surgery and their labs, let's say sometimes they want their blood work drawn like f right away, 4.30 in the morning so that they're ready if they're like first case if the bloods aren't drawn, which on my old unit, the nurses didn't draw the labs. It was the nursing assistants. It wasn't like, well, why didn't the nursing assistant draw the blood? It's why isn't your patient's blood drawn? And yeah. it's, it falls on you. So I felt like there was just a lot of like everything fell on us. And it was like, I was just always constantly like making sure I did everything right. Like even the littlest thing, like charting, if you didn't, you know, document something like that's a problem. You could get called while you're sleeping, ready for to come back the next night. They'll call you while you're home and call you about it. And it's like, so I felt like there was just, there's a lot of stress that comes with it. And some people who didn't really care to, you know, do something big or do not big, but just like do something different and kind of move up and try to go back or go back to school. Like a lot of people um, that nurses that I've talked to wanted to go to the ICU so that they can um, go back to school and be like a critical care NP or go to um, CRNA, which is like anesthesia school for nurses. So, and you need ICU experience for that. So a lot of times people went that route and did something different. They tried the ER because maybe they wanted to be a travel nurse and they didn't want to, uh, traveled in the specialty they were in. Mm -hmm. So they're like, all right, let's, um, cause they knew sometimes certain states, the patient ratios were worse. So they do different specialties just as a means to their next kind of yeah. step. And I feel like people who really didn't have that desire and just kind of were okay with graduating, being a nurse and just leaving it at wherever they were started the job and they were like, well, this sucks. So then they just left because mm -hmm. it was like, well, they didn't have a plan to do something else anyway. And then yeah. they kind of just find more of like um, a job more local at like an office that is just an easier lifestyle for them where they're not miserable. You know, I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, but no, it does. That's why I feel like people, um, they're not really able to like retain people in the hospitals. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like we'll, so some people will leave. I, on my unit now, I mean, I think a few people left. Some went to school. Some just, um, I think actually most of them, they left for school or someone retired. And then we like hired a few more people and, um, you know, everyone's like, oh, we got all, you know, all this new staff. And I'm like, no, we didn't because we just lost five. So we yeah. just gained f like, what, six? So we just gained one. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was like, every we get so excited. We're like, oh my God, we have staff again. Like, but you don't because people are leaving. And I think now too, especially everyone wants to go back to school or do something else because um, there's so much you can go back to school for and do as a nurse. And um, so a lot of people now want to go back to school. So there's a lot more turnover and a lot of people that leave. And um, so I feel like it's really hard to keep staff now. Yeah. 
And um, so, yeah. So where was I? I was saying that I you started on this get, new unit. You were on the new unit and you saw how cool and different. Yeah, it was I, I just thought it was the coolest mm-hmm. thing. Like I was like, these nurses like know this stuff. Yeah. Like they know how to like deal with this stuff. And um, I was like, this is what I need. Like I, I need to feel like useful. I need to do something other than just like grabbing someone water like yeah, i don't know up too yeah and i don't mean to um degrade like a med surge or telemetry unit there's people who are happy there i mean i did do it and i am so happy i did it because at first you know i wanted to work in an icu and i didn't get the job and i was really upset about starting on a med surge unit but it gave me such good experience and mm-hmm. such a good foundation i feel like if i never did it i would have been a worse nurse than i am now because yeah it gave me my foundation and there was so much that I learned. I mean, the nurses there, I went to them even until my year when I left, I was still going to them with questions. Cause you really, you're not going to learn everything in a year. And, um, they were so intelligent. They helped me so much and I learned a lot. It just wasn't for me. So mm-hmm. I just didn't feel fulfilled. I, again, I felt like I, I could have been doing more. I'm like, I'm just not like reaching my full potential here, you know? So on this new unit, I was just like ready. I'm like, this is it. Like, this is so cool. Um, and I feel like I, on this, on my old unit and just when I started being a nurse, it, I don't mean to make it about the unit made me feel like made me upset. It was just the life and what I felt like I thought nursing was about when I started. Yeah. And I noticed that I just like, I lost my compassion I had like no empathy anymore. I was, like I said, just very task like driven and oriented. And I just like, I didn't care. Like, I feel like I had no emotion and I felt like I was getting angrier more often. And I was like, I had no patience and I was very irritable. And so when I started on this new unit, I felt like I was going into it already with this tainted mindset and these tainted feelings, which was upsetting because I wanted to start fresh, but I it wasn't more of a mindset. It was just kind of who I became. Like I was just like, how do you make yourself patient if you're not, you know, like I was just, I had no patience anymore. And, um, but I was like, all right, like, you know, let's see what this is about, whatever. And I was training and I really loved it. I was learning a lot. I thought the nurses were like Einstein, like what they were doing. It was so cool. And, um, then I was on my own and, Again, like, you know, everyone's short staffed, every unit. Um, and but I did like it. I was I first they started me off with patients that were um, like easier for, you know, because I was new and they didn't want to like jump me into patients that yeah. it were a challenge or that I wasn't going to be able to manage for my sake and the patient safety. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, like I'm over it now. Like these are the patients. I, this is the stuff I was used to before. I was like, I wasn't like, you know, but gradually they would challenge me more and give me you know more challenging cases and I got to see more and um there's like certain devices that you can get um competencies in like you can get certified I guess you could Mm -hmm. say to do and um I signed up for some classes I was doing classes I wanted to do different devices and like um certain devices call for just um like a one-to-one so one nurse to one patient or even sometimes two nurses to a patient just because of the acuity and of the patient, how sick they are. And these were like things I really wanted to do. And um, so I really liked when I switched, I liked the unit and I liked what I was doing. Could I say that I was like, oh, I love nursing. Like, not really, but I was happier for sure. Like um, I knew I was talking to some other nurses that came on and I felt like they were like, I don't know how I feel about it. And I was like, really? Like, you don't like this better than that? Yeah. Like, you don't like this better than what we were doing? And some of them were like, I guess, or I have to feel it out. But I feel like right away I was like, yep, was I like better. this. I yeah. like, yeah. Was it the same um, hours? Like this, the three? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I worked nights to begin with and okay. I stayed with nights. Mm-hmm. Um, and the three twelves. Yeah. So the thing about the three twelves is like, everyone thinks that you work three days a week, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then you just have four days off and it mm-hmm. never works like that. Like, okay. um, you can be, our week starts on uh Sunday and ends on Saturday. So you can be on Sunday and then be on, let's say Sunday, Monday, like Friday, or you mm-hmm. could be on 
Monday off Tuesday back Wednesday. So you only really Thursday. get a day, but then you're kind of taking that day to like recover and get your right. rest. Sometimes you can schedule like three days a week. So let's say like Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then your three days at the end of the next week. Mm-hmm. So like Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So you have like a nice eight days off, I think yeah. it is. So that's nice about the threes. Mm-hmm. I am like anti three in a row because it just makes me a miserable yeah, person. So I refuse like if I don't have to, I won't do three in a row. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think that I have a better mindset when I'm like, okay, I'm only on for one. Like, I'm not back tomorrow. I could handle anything for 12 hours. Right. And I could be the best nurse there is for 12 hours. I can I can be patient. I can try to get to know these people because it's 12 hours. So mm-hmm. no matter how bad it is, I'm not back, right? right. Like, yeah. And the good sense. thing about not – about working for someone else is you never take the, the work home with you. Like, mm-hmm. when I leave and clock out – I left that patient in someone else's hands and it's their responsibility for the next 12 hours. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to go home and worry about it at all. I mean, you may think about it, but it's Mm -hmm. not your responsibility once you left. And so I like to do like, I'll usually prefer like one on one off. I mean, a lot of night nurses don't like that because then they feel like that one day off they're sleeping a lot all the, the, the whole day. But I've kind of gotten my routine where I'll like sleep for three hours, wake up and like do something with my day. Um, even like two on, I could do two on like, but I just, I really don't like threes. And I think threes also like fuck with people's head Mm -hmm. too, because you're, it's literally just like sleep, go to work, sleep, go to work. There's nothing in between because you get out in the morning and it's not like when you get home from work Monday night, you're going to work the next day. You're going to work that same day. So you get home in the morning, you sleep, you're back that night. And so there's no room for anything else. And I feel like when I would do other jobs and work like more during the daytime when I was like in high school or something, even though I had to be up early the next day, let's say even just for class, like if you're in school, you get home kind of late, you, you have to be up early the next day, but you kind of have your time to just like sit and unwind and like lay on your couch, watch an episode. Whereas I felt like when I would get out that morning, I'm like, well, I'm back to the same day. And just working overnight, even if you had a lot of sleep, I feel like it, you just are more tired. Like it's yeah. just, no, we're not programmed to like be mm-hmm. up overnight. So I didn't want to sit and have coffee on my couch. I was so shot. I just wanted to go to sleep. Mm-hmm. So you're just like sleep, work, sleep, work, sleep, work. And if you had a horrible shift, it's like, who wants to be back the next day for 13 hours? So I'm like, I prefer to not like do shifts back to back, but, um, it depends. Sometimes you just want to make your schedule so that you have some more time off. But yeah, so the th- I like the 312s. I always say I don't think I could ever switch to days, but I don't think I could ever switch to like a Monday to, to Friday schedule. Yeah. Um, it's also pretty nice because it's flexible. So um, I said I do injections too, like Botox and filler. And it's nice because like I can schedule clients around um, some – so most nurses would like sleep before night shift. I feel like some, a lot of nurses though, they've kind of gotten their routine down like me where like they're not sleeping up until the point of work if it's like their first day on. Mm -hmm. So like sometimes I'll wake up at like 10 o'clock. I'll like try to sleep in a little later, like 10, 11 so that I slept. And then I'll like go do like a client for lips or two clients or three, like I'll schedule a few and then I'll go straight to the hospital. So that's where I like nights because it's a little flexible where I can do things beforehand. Um, I mean, when I first started, I was like getting up at 10 o'clock, like I'm going to work and I have to sleep till four o'clock. But now I feel like I've gotten my routine where it's a little mm-hmm. different. So I make use of like my day. So I feel like I still had my day, even though I'm at work at night. I'm not just, my day's gone and all I do is work. Yeah. So when you know? did you start doing the injections and stuff like that? I started recent in um, August, September. Mm-hmm. And I like it because I always was interested in it, but Mm -hmm. I felt like it was just different. And it was like a different side of nursing that I feel like a lot of people don't realize you could do. And um, that's another thing about nursing, which is nice, is like there's literally so many different things you could do. You don't have to work with patients like bedside taking care of them, giving Mm -hmm. meds or hanging blood. Like you can do something a little more glamorous if you want to. Um, So yeah, I started that in like, um, August, September. I think it was more towards like more in September is when I really like um, started. I made like an Instagram and I was like mm-hmm. doing it. Um, but 
yeah it's really nice i like it too it's so i get do you to like, do like both best of both i was worlds. gonna say so do you like doing both like you do you think you're gonna do both for a while yeah i don't think i'll ever leave the hospital okay um a lot of people ask me that they're like yeah why don't you just leave this crap and like mm-hmm. go do that full time but i don't think i'm fulfilled without the cticu yeah. i think I feel like I don't even know half of what there is to learn. Mm -hmm. And I already feel so much more fulfilled in what I'm doing. Um, And I don't, I think, I always think about going back to school. I'm like, I'm young. This is like my time if I want to. And then another part of me is like, you're really going to go back to school. And I'm like, I think I want to further what I'm doing now with the Mm -hmm. hospital job. um, Because... I, I don't think I would be ha- – I would have a, probably a lot less stress, but I right. don't think I would be happy just doing, like, Botox and fillers and inject- yeah. injectables. Like, it's fun and I love it, and I don't see myself stopping, but um, – It's different. It, yeah, it's different, and I, I do – I like what I do at the hospital now. Yeah. Um. So I wouldn't – I wouldn't leave. Everyone says that to me, like, you should just leave. And mm-hmm. I'm like, I can't. I, I, I don't think I would – I don't know. I just, I wouldn't be fulfilled. I'd be like, I need more. I was going to say, and there might come a time too in your life, like as you get older, where you might want to slow down and have like a slower pace, but I mean, you're young and if you don't want that yet, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I do have a question. So when you were in the hospital and going to these different units, like when you would start on a new unit and Mm -hmm. like, even when you were fresh out of school, did you ever feel like any of like the higher up nurses like look down on you or like were rude in any way at any time just because you were like new and might not like know as much? Um, I feel like this is like a popular topic. Like even yeah. on like TikTok, I like watch videos all the time about it. Um, when I first started on the unit, the first unit I was on, I didn't feel that way because it seems it's more of a, a med surge unit is it's more typical for a new grad to start in a med surge okay. unit since it's kind of like a lot of places like i said want you to get your foundation first and start mm-hmm. there before you do other things so a lot of nurses start there um i mean some never leave but some do and they get their foundation and they leave and so i felt like there was a lot of turnover because people were really just doing it to get to the next mm-hmm. thing and a lot of times also it was the first job you could get like for me that was the first job I got since I got rejected from like my dream yeah so um it was a lot of new nurses and everyone was so young so I never felt that way but then when I went to the CTICU no one was ever rude to me it was Mm -hmm. all in my head but like there were so many older nurses there that I which I, it was more of like a shell shock I was like oh my god and now there's like more of a wave like they just kept hiring a bunch of people more my age so Mm -hmm. now there's like I feel like a really good mix but I feel like for a solid month that I was there I was everyone was like you're the youngest on the unit like you're the baby of the unit and I really was like everyone was older and I think I was just intimidated um on my old unit if we needed um like a mid-level practitioner like we needed to put orders in or something happened with a patient we would have to page them and wait for them to page us back and on this unit I mean it's these patients are really sick. It's an ICU. So there's um, like MLPs on the unit. So there's mm-hmm. PAs, nurse practitioners sitting there. And I think that also made it a little more intimidating yeah. for me. Um, they, they're they very smart. They know exactly what they're talking about. The nurses that are more seasoned and have been there for a while know exactly what they're talking about. And I'm literally know nothing. And also I came from like an orthopedic spinal unit and mm-hmm. we're doing open heart here now. So I'm like, I, yes, there's like, a lot that I could take with me but also like I didn't know how to get a patient even sitting up with like a chest tube and then they have like pacing wires I'm like Mm -hmm. what's a pacing wire like I I really had no clue what any of this stuff was and we really never saw like chest tubes and um all these things so I feel like it was intimidating for me and in my head I felt like everyone's looking at me judging me Mm -hmm. and I was very nervous to like ask questions because I was like she just thinks I'm stupid or he just thinks I'm like stupid but Honestly, once I was, I don't know why I felt this way when I was training for some reason, because the preceptor I was with, I, he's like the best. Like Mm -hmm. I even always go to him. He's so great. But, um, I guess I just felt like everyone was just like staring, like who's the new girl. Right. And I definitely was in my head though, because when I finished and I was on my, finished training and I was on my own, everyone was always like, are you okay? Do you need help with anything? Like constantly checking up on me. And I 
would go to anyone with any questions. Like I remember my first day on my own, I come in and like my patients, she already was intubated and sedated, but then she started like seizing. And so I had to bring her down to to a CAT scan because they were like, all right, like, you know, they had to take a CAT scan of her, of her brain. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, how are we bringing her to a CAT scan downstairs? And she's connected to a ventilator and she has 10 IV poles. And mm-hmm. like, what, how am I doing this on my own? Like, I just yeah. freaked out. And, um, you know, because then you have to get respiratory to come and they bring, I guess, like this portable ventilator and they have to come down with you and you need uh, transport. And then usually like you could go on your own, depends like how much is really attached to the patient. You may need someone else. And one of the nurses stepped in right away. She's like, I'm like, I just have my one patient right now. Like I'll come with you. And I probably would have like died if she didn't come with me. I would have no clue what I would, I like would have pulled at something. Like, I don't know. I didn't know what I was doing. And then I'm also like, how do you, how is she seizing if she's like sedated? Like I didn't understand. And, um, everyone was just like so hands-on helping me. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like I really couldn't like be more grateful, but I see all the time online, like nurses saying that like they're getting bullied by older nurses. And I never understood that because I'm like, you complain that you're short staffed, you get staff to come on and then you're nasty because they don't know what they're doing. Why don't you just help them and teach Mm -hmm. them this way they could be of use? Like, didn't you want them to come? You you wanted the staff, right? And now they're here and you're just mad because they're young. Like, I Mm -hmm. never understood that. Yeah, and I I feel like too, everyone needs to learn. You know what I mean? And and I think it's interesting that, you know, and good also that you have such, like, even though, you had a moment where you didn't love something you were doing that you're shedding such a positive light on it because I remember even I worked for this woman a while ago like a babysat for her she was older but um I remember she like made a comment once I was young but she was like never be a nurse like it's horrible and like all this stuff and like it's just like you said it's kind of like the things that you hear yeah all the time and I think that what you said is really important because once again with anything you know you might start at a lower, you know, tier that you might not love, Mm -hmm. but you kind of have to go through in order to like learn and realize, do I like this or not? You know, and it kind of reminds me too, like what you said of like you, it wasn't what you thought it would be on, you know, how it was on paper. Um, Like how I wanted to be in the FBI. And everybody would say (laughs) to me, like, it's not what you think. Cause I'm like such a go, go person. Like I was like, I want to be in the field, like solving crime scenes. And people were like, no, it's like 90% paperwork. And I'm like, no way. It's not like that in the shows. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But it's so true. Yeah. I don't think anything is really what it seems until you do it and you know. And and no, I think that, yeah, I just think it's it's really interesting to hear you, you know, like share this. And I think it's good because there might be people too. I feel like because social media is so influencing to people that they might hear one bad story and it mm-hmm. might completely change their mind. Yeah. But then if they hear – well, there's so many different things that you can do and like, you know, tap into that might interest you. You know, it's worth it to give it a chance and just see. And nothing's easy. You know what I mean? You're not going to start right right away and just like have it down and know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, So yeah, but do you think that you're going to, like, is this a unit that you think you want to stay on? Is there like any other units that would interest you, you think? Or was this? No, I feel like this is it. it. I do want to go back to school. I'm not really sure what I want to do. It'll definitely be just an extension of what I'm doing like furthering my career now it's not like I want to do something different yeah but um I definitely want to go back to school I mean there's like options um and now I feel like maybe I want to do like CRNA and do like um which is like and I say like I explain to people like anesthesia school for nurses Mm -hmm. and you need ICU experience for that that would be cool or yeah or even um nurse practitioner just because I I like what I'm doing and I love it but I'm like okay what's next Mm -hmm. now like And I know I shouldn't have that mindset yet because there's so much more for me to still learn that I don't know at all. I'm still – I've only been on this unit for – I think now it's it's like I'm going on – I think it is seven months now, Mm -hmm. which may sound like a little bit of time, but I feel like it's really not um, for all that there is to do there. But – so I do plan to stay there for a while Mm -hmm. longer, and I would definitely want to go back to school. I feel like now is my time. Um, but I don't see myself going to a different unit and, um, just like bouncing off what you said when someone was like, don't ever be a nurse. I feel like that's what you're right. That is what you hear. And people make it sound like this just like dirty, horrible thing. And 
It's really not. I mean, every unit's different. Um, you know, I mean, we're at the end of the day, if something's happening and this patient's crashing, like we're saving their lives, we're right. really helping, you know, giving blood transfusion, CPR, whatever it is that we're doing. Um, and I, I also understand why, you know, everyone's like, oh, if you don't like what you do or you complain, why don't you just leave? Why don't you just leave? Do something else. It's not that easy. Um, I was fortunate that like the second I was able to go up to this ICU and do something different, I did it and was able to. But there's nurses who have been on these med surge units for honestly like decades, like Mm -hmm. over 10 years, maybe 20 years. Um, And they're not happy. Like I've talked to some nurses and they don't want to be there. But if they they've said, you know, it's not really that easy to just, okay, go somewhere else. Because if you go somewhere else, let's say they're working day shift, sometimes there's only a night shift available. Mm -hmm. And maybe they're the ones who are putting their kids to bed at night and they need to be home at night for their kids or making dinner for their kids. Like sometimes their schedule and what they have, they keep it because it works for their family or they may get a job somewhere else, but they're taking a pay cut and they can't really afford to take a pay cut. Mm -hmm. So, um, or even just like someone was telling me, um, why don't you go to, there's a CTSU at the original hospital that I I applied for. And like, why don't you try to move there now? Like, you know, you've got this position. I'm sure you could get that one now and maybe you'll get paid. I think you'll get paid more. But I'm getting married next year and I'm like, I have accumulated all this vacation time and Mm -hmm. that training there is a year. So what am I going to do? Train? And they're paying me to train. So I'm going to get paid my full salary to train, which means I'm not contributing to staffing, right? Because I'm with another nurse and helping her or him with their patients. And then as soon as I finish training, I'm going to be like, okay, by the way, I'm like going to leave for three weeks to go on vacation. It's like, it, it doesn't, you know, really work that right. way. I've accumulated no time. Um, I've put none of my own time into the job. So sometimes, like I said before, like the grass isn't always greener. And sometimes people who want to leave can't. It's not as easy for them or they may want to, but they're sacrificing for like their family um, or themselves. And I don't know, some people have to pay rent. And sometimes you don't get more money when you go somewhere else. And, you know, you've been at a certain hospital for 10 years and you're making what you're making because you've been there for 10 years and going somewhere else, you're not going to make the same amount of money. So it's not always easy to just say, oh, just leave. And sometimes when you're there, I feel like there is this whole thing of like, oh, are they going to be nice to me? And a lot of people don't leave their unit because they're afraid. And they're Mm -hmm. like, well, I don't want to go somewhere else. And then be miserable and no one likes me and if I hate it what do I do um so there's like that too where it's like it's again it's just not as easy to just be like all right I don't like this I'm going somewhere else it's not as I think everyone's like oh there's a sh- you know a nursing shortage so it's so easy to get a job it really isn't I mean I feel like I even struggle I mean I started working like what two hours after I passed my boards which isn't a long time but I mean the amount of hospitals that I just threw my resume at and applied and filled out applications and the amount I heard back from was like a big difference. Yeah. So it's really like no one's begging you to work for them. No one's like outside with a flyer saying, come here, we have a job for you. Mm -hmm. Like it's not that easy. And especially like people who want to go into different specialties, they don't hire as easily I find as um, just like general med surge units in my experience, at least where I live. Yeah. So there's that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I I think too, you know, just kind of going back to what we were saying about, you know, how big it is on social media to talk about like nursing and all these different careers, you know, I just think that it's really interesting that, um, I just lost my train of thought. Gone, gone like the (laughs) wind, just gone. It's Um, okay. I can keep rambling. (laughs) No, I, I, I really had something to say and then it just poofed. I hate that. And you're like, you're no, thinking it while the other person's talking. She's like, I say, know what it related. It related back to the other thing I said, but then it was just the other thing came back up. And I was like, no, I already said that. It'll come back. It'll come back. I was going to say it related to social media. Because I feel like. Well, now even I feel like you have to be. I mean, I like make TikToks, like funny little TikToks. Yeah. But I feel like you have to be so careful because did you hear about like, um, I really don't know the details, but I think it was like on a labor and delivery unit. Um, some nurses there's like a trend going around where you say your ics about nursing mm-hmm. I guess um, 
I I really haven't watched that many of them, but I guess it's mm-hmm. like something you just whatever don't like about the field or yeah. whatever. And um, a few nurses like. I don't remember what they said, but it was something they've said, like, I hate when patients, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And a f- it was like a few nurses. I really didn't think it was that bad. But yeah. I could understand how a hospital would be like, well, this doesn't look good. Right. And um, I know this is like probably controversial. I mean, I see both sides, but I thought and they got fired. And I was like, really? Yeah. And I thought maybe, all right, like a warning or like mm-hmm. just put them on like, I don't know, like however you get a nurse in trouble like yeah whatever like um like a probationary period i don't know right. like write them up yeah um but like i think they wrote that the hospital like put out a statement and they like fired all the nurses for that so i feel like you have to be so careful now with what you say mm-hmm. um there's like a nurse that i know like filmed a tiktok and i don't even think it said anything she said anything mm-hmm. rude in it it was like something just funny about like her and her coworker, and she got written up because of the room that she filmed in, which there wasn't any patient information, but I think they have like designated, like even just like the pantry that they don't want you filming anything in. Yeah. And um, that too, like when I'll film like s- just like silly TikToks, like going to the bathroom or something. Cause I'm like, even if you're in the hallway and you don't, there's no one around, like if there's an EKG strip laying around, even if it's in the corner of the room and you could barely see the 12 size font of the patient's name, like it's still technically you're violating HIPAA because the yeah. patient's information is on a video. That's so you have to be like so careful what you post. Mm-hmm. Um, and even I feel like you can't really say too much about your own views too mm-hmm. much. Um, Cause like in a, in a way you just, you, you represent your hospital yeah. and um I feel like a lot of nurses just kind of just spew politics around, which I used to do that when I was in school. And I, past few years, I just haven't put a single thing on because it's just dangerous. Like, it's just, it's not worth losing my job over to say how I feel when it's not going to change anyone else's mind anyway. Um, And so I feel like we have to be so careful because everything we say is like a representation of our hospital. Mm -hmm. And then patients don't want to come there if they feel yeah. like you know there's nurses who are saying this mm-hmm. or even if it doesn't seem like it's that bad like someone may film a harmless video and not realize like there was a chart in the back and then it's like even if there's no information just someone's name like that's mm-hmm. already HIPAA so yeah it's like so easy to do the wrong thing and then get in trouble over something that was like an innocent mistake yeah and I think I think what I was gonna say was that it's really interesting how like you were saying before we started, how like the nurses on like social media, it's become like a clan almost of like, and it's yeah. like a known thing. Like nurse talk, they call yeah, it. Yeah, literally. And I think it, it's really like I was saying, because, you know, Claudia's made a couple of TikToks just like telling stories and people yeah. love it. And and I think because there's so many people that can relate that either have done it or still are nurses. Um, so I just think that that's really cool because, you know, with each thing, there's going to be like a group of people that yeah. can relate to it. But I feel like because the nurses will be like, all right, we're not alone. Exactly. Because like the stories they tell exactly. are not, they're not telling glamorous stories. Like, no, right. So they're like, okay, like, thank you. Finally, someone agrees or finally someone like, you know, feels the same way. So, yeah. um, or even just to like make someone feel, because I know I think Claudia's was about her being like nervous during a clinical. And I think yeah. that, like you said, it's, it really helps people not to feel alone and to feel, and that's kind of what I was saying yeah. too before about even you coming on and talking about it, it's like it could make, it could inspire somebody to maybe stick with it and see, okay, is there something else that I like um, yeah. that I could try? Because I think with anything, it can be difficult to really like want to push through, especially if you're that miserable. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I have a couple different friends that I don't think my one friend is a, I mean, I don't think she's a nurse. I don't know like what she, she does um, ball scans and vag scans. <laughs> maybe like a, like an ultrasound tech or something? Yes, like but a, like, maybe? but I think that, but she didn't go to, I don't think it was nursing school. I think she went through a program. Like, like, um, I don't even know, like radiology school or something? Yeah, like it was, like it wasn't what, like, like Claudia did like actual like right, nursing right. school and then she did like a program. Yeah. Um, But I know, you know, it's it gets funny too because like she'll, I know she works nights. I think she does like a Friday through to Sunday kind of oh, thing. Okay. Um, That's kind of tough. 
Yeah. So, but then she has, she like likes that whole long week. To yeah. Have. The stretch. Yeah. So, um, but I know that she'll always do like, cause sometimes they're not as busy. So she'll do her little TikToks. Like, yeah. Which make me laugh. But yeah, I mean, it's a, you know, I always like feel like I film, like I'll make like silly TikToks and mm-hmm. like people will come up to me at work and they're like, I saw your TikTok. Cause like right. some nurse pages have reposted it. And I'm like, oh my God. But then I like will text a friend. And I'm like, do you think it's bad? Like, will I get fired for this? Should right. I take it down? Meanwhile, like one of them I literally was just like shrugging like I barely said a word mm-hmm. it wasn't even like rude in any way they're just like funny silly things yeah. I would never make a TikTok and like say something about a patient like mm-hmm. but um which some like, people do like yeah, they'll just tell exa- like a yes. whole and thing. yeah and they'll like really give you their mm-hmm. opinion and I'm like yeah like I'm too nervous to do that and um so like just like I'll, I feel like I literally make like silly 10 second clips mm-hmm. and I'll already text my friend and be like that was okay, right? And she's like, yeah. it's funny. You didn't – like, she's like, I would tell you if you said something bad. Like, you're not even speaking in the video. Right. And I'm like, okay, okay. Because, like, nothing's worth – for me, noth- I I love my job so much and nothing's worth losing it. Yeah. But it's also, like, it's kind of, like, annoying. that it, I mean, it's, it comes with the territory, but it's hard because – before nursing like you could post whatever the hell you want like it's your social media like Mm -hmm. and now like you really can't and like you'll get fired like that like it's you know because and i get it but it's just so hard to like really have to think about every single thing that you like say or post Mm -hmm. um i think too it's just like it it seems like a career that's become so relatable in a sense for people to like want to share and want to talk and then see what other people think too which I think is really interesting um that it has become like that and I think you know it's for anything for that matter it's good that I think people can they have like a source and an outlet to like look to and like you said yeah. ultimately just feel like okay I'm not alone in this and like mm-hmm. there's other people that do it. it makes it like fun in a way um and like I was saying too I, I think that having different people in the show from different walks and like careers I feel like is is good because there's a lot of people that might be watching that don't really know what goes into nursing. And I know I bring up Claudia all the time just because that's the, like, right. I just know what she went through. But, um, you know, even with all of the schooling, like how, how time consuming and how yeah. like you really have to pour, it, it is like more than half your life into yeah. it. And really, even if you are doing, so I remember like she would sometimes say like, oh, if I'm just doing like three twelves or whatever, it won't be that bad. But, and it, technically people might think oh it's only three nights a week but like you said depending on how that's i like hate when people are like yeah oh, you only work three days a week like you must have like you have right. four days off and i'm like oh my god yeah so i think it's it really is for people worse than it sounds yeah, yeah and it's like depending on how that's laid out it might not be that easy and you know that glamorous and i know even i'll never forget when claudia told me she had a wipe an old man's ass that was just like he just kept shitting and she just kept wiping and i was like i don't know how you have to you... literally see everything in clinic right like, i'm you like you don't get a choice how did you yeah. do that like i'd be vomiting i can wipe my cat's ass but i can't i cannot wipe an old man's ass i'm sorry i can't but um but no so i do think it, it it's yeah. really interesting to hear because you you know you went through and now you you know you are you worked on a couple different units and stuff like that and and I think it's really good. I think it's interesting and, and awesome. Yeah. And I'm really glad that, you know, like you reached out and you wanted to come on and share it. Because like I said, I just think that anybody that might be interested, you know, or is thinking about it, I feel like you're a good example of like, it's worth it if it's what you think you want to yeah. do. And and I also feel like I get why people could say they hate it. And mm-hmm. it's like, some people might be miserable and not find a unit or a specialty that makes it worth it to them and I get it because I feel like I've been in a position or I've been on a unit or like I did the work that I didn't want to do mm-hmm. essentially and I was so miserable and I could understand why someone might just not want to do it at all yeah. and I feel like some people are like you know we all have to work like why are you complaining and they're just like I've heard people say like this, these nurses, like I've never heard someone complain more about their job than nurses, but it's, I, I get why they're complaining. Like I, I understand it and I see it. And, um, like recently I had an interaction with a patient where, um, we just vibed, like he was a young guy, he had open heart surgery and, um, his wife was there with him too. And we just like talked about life and like everything. And we just connected like so well and um the next morning i was like do you guys want tea like they they were young like they're like yeah like i took down their like tea orders like made tea Mm -hmm. and i like sat with them for i had like five minutes before i had to like start like giving medication and i was like 
I sat with them and I like had tea with them and we just like clicked. And then um, I like, he's like, are you back tonight? Or like, what's your schedule like? And I was explaining my schedule of the week. And then he's like, oh, so you're not back. And I'm like, no. And he's like, well, that's not going to work. Like he wanted me to come back yeah. and be his nurse. And I literally contemplated like, all right, maybe I'll come back just because I had such a good day right. with him, which I never would just like want to come back. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, all right, maybe I'll come back. And then I knew he was going to be downgraded that day because he didn't really need critical care mm -hmm. um, level of care anymore. But um, I was like, it was just such a good like day and experience. And I felt like all that like compassion and empathy and like that drive that I had that was lost. Mm -hmm. Like it was like, all right, like he brought it back. And before I left, he's like, can I please have a picture with you? And I was like, yeah, sure. And like, he took a picture with me. He's like, all right, now my wife, like, and took a picture with me and his wife. And he's like, um, he's like, you know, I, I'll always remember this because I'll always remember being in this hospital because I'm young and I had to have open heart surgery. And if I didn't, I probably wouldn't be here for much longer. So I'll never forget the fact that I'm here to begin with, but you just made like this whole experience so much better. Like, I just you were just amazing and like he really made me feel like I was so important and I made like such an impact on him and that was where a point that I was like okay this it came back to me like this is why I'm doing this and um because you know when you hear stories of like nurse got punched in in the stomach or nurse got slapped in the face it's like you just sit there and you're like like why am I here? Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, what am I doing? And then you get punched in the face and you just keep going. It's like, mm, that's that's kind of not fair. That sucks. Like, you just yeah. got to keep going in that same room, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and so it's like you hear stories and um, sometimes you see it with your own coworkers and it's it just makes you think like, why am I doing this? Or like, why do we have to go through this? And then you have like experiences like that, like I had with that patient where I was just like, the whole, it was all worth it like it was like this is why I'm doing it but it's not always glamorous um especially different units may be worse than others like the work that they have to do and I can understand like why people are could be so miserable I mean there's so much good that can come from being a nurse like I think if I could do it all over again I really would do it again yeah. um because even if I was like, you know what? I wish I was a doctor instead. I probably would go to med school after being a nurse because I'm like, I probably, well, I do carry so much more knowledge mm -hmm. than a student who's going to med school straight out of school right. who majored in like biology and has never looked at a patient in their life. And I actually, for the most part, depending like mm -hmm. know how to treat these patients and their different illnesses and what they go you through in surgery experience yeah so i'm like i probably even if i decided oh i wish i did i don't know pa or something else instead where i you can't branch off and do that after nursing i probably would still have been a nurse and done it anyway because i think that the knowledge that i hold now is so valuable um i know one girl from my nursing program she in college she's in PA school now and she everyone was like well you know why are you going to nursing school if you just want to be a PA like why don't you just do nurse practitioner and she had like sp some specific specialty she wanted to be in that I think a PA was able to do more I don't know and um everyone was like kind of took it as an insult like do you think you're better than us or something like why are you you know but honestly I think she's extremely smart because anyone who's going to PA school after undergrad, they're majoring in some sort of science, right? Mm -hmm. Like let's say bio, I feel like that's pretty common. Like what are you learning as a bio major? You're learning about cells and all that, sorry, bullshit. Mm -hmm. Like that has nothing to do with a patient. And yes, like pathophysiology, like there's ways that it does relate, but like realistically, that's not gonna teach you how to manage someone with a heart attack. Yeah. And she knows how to manage someone with a heart attack. Like mm -hmm. she knows real patient scenario. So like that's going to make her an amazing PA. So I feel like I still would do it all over again because mm -hmm. nursing can be so rewarding. Um, I just feel like you have to kind of find what it is that you like in it and like kind of what lights that spark. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you're going to be miserable. And I, mm -hmm. I like feel for all the nurses that are 
working right now and struggling and understaffed and going through it because like we're all going through it together and it's not easy but um like you said I do feel like it does take a special person to like do it and stick with it yeah um and yeah so I feel like like I said I would do it all over again there's like good bad and ugly but yeah no I think it's great yeah. and I mean I'd want you to be my nurse so. <laughs> no but I think it's really good and like I just wanted to touch on too like when you um just really fast when you said about the one patient that you had and like the impact you made I remember you know my grandma has been in and out of the hospital sometimes with like because she had open heart surgery and I remember like just hearing stories from her and my mom of like a certain doctor or a certain nurse that like she loved so much that yeah. like when she was getting moved down to a different unit like she was so upset to get moved down because yeah. she liked that nurse so much so I definitely know that that makes a huge difference you know because people that are going into the hospital they're scared you know what I mean right. and a lot of times the reason they're so mean and angry and I bitter, was just gonna say yeah, because they're, they're terrified you know yeah. so I think that and they're also like in a, such a vulnerable situation yeah. like not to like be like I just think about it, I'm like I could not go in a hospital like fully naked wearing a gown that right. has my back open and just expect all these strangers to uh, just expect myself to be comfortable with all these strangers mm-hmm. and then rely on them for everything like yeah. my meds if I even want to get up it's like even if I can get up on my own I still have to call them and mm-hmm. tell them I'm getting like it's like we we really do well the ho- just being in a hospital really does strip away a lot mm-hmm. of like almost like your human dignity and it's not meant to but it ha- it's just it's just what happens you yeah. know because like we do it for their safety but like it does and so it's really hard on them and they're probably just also like embarrassed and right. like you know yeah so right exactly and I think having a nurse or a doctor that's so caring and like shows that you're not just another patient and like you are a person with you know a name and feelings and your doctor or your nurse remembers you you know and has yeah. that conversation with you I think that does make I know it makes a huge impact and like I said I've heard it firsthand from like my grandma and stuff like that and you know anybody that's been in a hospital and hospital and has a good experience just like you hear if someone has a bad experience you're like it was the, like, the meanest nurse or the yeah. meanest doctor like just so inconsiderate so I think that like you said that makes it really important and I feel like um you know the fact that you're now able to be on a unit that gives you that ability to have that is really important because like you know if you if you can't even have that then like you said yeah. what's the point you know for for both parties it's like it just it just makes it more cold and like yeah you know not as not as rewarding for sure but no I think I think it's great and once again thank you so much for coming on and was there anything else you wanted to share or no I feel like that was it I feel like I yeah. really touched upon like Good. what I felt inside and had to say yeah, yeah no I think it's great and like I said I think the most important thing in my opinion is just shedding a positive light on that career as a whole because yeah. you know while there's you know like funny and good stuff on TikTok you might see like in like I said even my experience just with that older woman saying like it's, yeah. it's the worst like and she was just so angry and like bitter and that's like sad yeah. yeah it is sad and it's like what if I was thinking about it you know yeah. that might have just made me just be like okay never mind you know what I mean so I do yeah. think with every career, it's good to get like a very positive perspective and a real and raw perspective, you know, because like I said, like you had that experience from the beginning where like you thought you wanted to do one thing and then you didn't, that you tried something. And, you know, so I, I think that everybody needs to hear like, even though it might not start off perfect, like just stick with it and like yeah. figure it out. And like, and then you might still not want to do it at some point. And like mm-hmm. I even said to you, there might be a point where this might not be it for you in like 10 years, you know, right. like, it's okay to change. So yeah, I think it's great. I think you did amazing. And Thank I'm so you. glad you were able to come on. Yes, me too.